Hey, how's it going guys? Jackson here with Toasty DIY and today we're going to be showing how exactly Mega Squirt works and basically how to set it up. So this is particularly pertaining to an L28 ET swap on basically any of the Z cars. Um, technically, it doesn't even have to be a Z car. This is for the version 3.57. Uh, it's Mega Squirt 2 and it's the plug and play one. So, I mean, this is going to be true for if you build the, the kit yourself or, or whatnot, but the only upsides, obviously, with the plug and play one is you literally buy the kit. I mean, it's $1,300, which sounds like a lot to me, completely worth it because it only takes about, I don't know, three to, I would say, six hours to install as long as you have everything you need. This is a 1983, I believe, L2080T. It's either 1982 or 1983. I kind of forget because I bought this engine over a year ago, but. Um, I did the Mega Squirt conversion probably five months ago now, and um, I actually had never had this engine running um, without the Mega Squirt conversion because I was sold the wrong harness with this. I was actually sold a 280Z harness and a 280Z ECU, so I didn't have any of the turbo components I really needed to run this engine. Main things you're going to need you have to have a Turbo ZX distributor, you have to have a distributor that has a CAS. Um, installed on it basically because the the timings actually kept on that so you have to make sure that you get a 280zx turbo distributor my two l2080 t is mostly stock i'm running about 10 psi of boost right now i literally just have this really cheap um, manual boost controller down there all it really does is just tells the wastegate hey don't open yet or hey open earlier and it's also intercooled so it doesn't have the stock j pipe or anything it's just the stock t3 turbo though going through an intercooler um, and then obviously you do get the new i think it's a 240sx throttle body conversion um, that's one of the things that comes with the kit also you get a fuse block over here which is basically what powers the whole entire kit and it makes sure that you're you know kit doesn't blow up either you have some pretty important fuses in there the only other things i can really remember is you do have to install a gauge or two like this right here is the exhaust temp gauge um, this vacuum port right here is installed with the harness this goes inside straight to the ecu that's very important because if that is not installed whenever you're watching your your gauges on mega score which i'll show you in a minute um, they're not going to move up and down properly like basically let's say you're looking at your AR, afr map um, your air to fuel ratio map You'll notice when you give it gas, you should get like, you know, a different type of curve. If you don't have the, uh, your, your actual map gauge hooked up or sorry, your, your vacuum gauge, um, you're basically just going to get a flat line the whole time. You're going to wonder what the heck's happening with my car running like shit. Well, it's because that's probably come unplugged. That actually happened to me and it took me a while to figure it out. So that, that's one thing that hopefully helps some people in case that happens to you. But long story short though, pretty basic setup here. Nothing really that's been modified uh, you know has a different exhaust on it and everything it's a full stainless steel exhaust but other than that i mean it's pretty straightforward the only thing you have to really do inside the car uh, is remove your old ecu remove the old harness from the engine bay and then you do have to plug in uh the fuel uh, fuel pump um, straight to the ECU as well because that's actually powered by Mega Squirt at that point as well. Basically, all the major en engine components will be powered uh, now by your Mega Squirt ECU, and you no longer um, will be using the the stock ECU for your engine bay components, ignition timing, air to fuel ratio, and fuel pump. It basically just controls all that stuff. All your gauges and lights and everything else is still in a separate harness, though. So don't worry about um, you know messing any of that up because you don't you don't have to worry about it. You're gonna basically download program called Tuner Studio Lite. I actually paid for the Tuner Studio like full version, which I kind of regret doing. Um, not that it's a, it's an awesome app, and I, you know I'm glad I paid to an extent because it helps support them. But on the same side, I actually paid for it so that I could have this right here, the live tuning, uh, where it'll basically tune it for you. Now, every time I tried it, it completely messed up my tune. Um, I don't know if I just didn't have some settings configured right or what, but I'd have it tuned relatively well. And I'm like, okay, let's try to fine tune it a little bit more. Um, and for some reason, it would just do some really crazy numbers uh, for the air to fuel. And that's the other thing too, it only changes um, the AFR basically. It just changes how much fuel the injectors dump in to your intake. It doesn't really change, like I didn't see an option for ignition timing or anything crazy like that. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so we actually have a uh, tuner studio pulled up. The light version, by the way, looks like the exact same. The only real difference is like I said, is you got this over here uh, and then you have this diagnostics high speed uh, loggers and then tuner analyze live and just to, if you guys want to see what that looks like you you literally get your same exact gauges over here a little bit more customizable and then this over here you can actually click uh, start auto tune and like I said that basically changes all of these values which is just how much fuel um, it's putting in at one point versus the RPM and it also matches up with the air to fuel ratio that you're aiming for 
Um, but long story short, I don't, I don't really recommend it, um, especially if you're trying to save money. But basically, your ECU should come pre-configured to start the car, like your first time start. And I'll go ahead and show you guys uh, what that will look like, if I can remember how to get to it. Okay, basic load settings, and then we're gonna go to engine and sequential settings. So obviously it's uh, 2800 cc, and then you also have to do your injector size. We have stock injectors, so it should be 265s. Um, you basically wanna keep all these settings like the exact same, or if for some reason yours are not pre-configured, you can just go ahead and copy these. They, like I said, this, I haven't changed any of that stuff, so it should all be word for word. Um, and then back over to basic settings, go to general settings. This is once again another one that should be pretty generic. I don't think that this stuff was actually, I guess I would say pre-tuned. I think that this just comes on the app as is. If you guys wanna copy this stuff, like I said, it's all good. The car runs really well right now, by the way. So, you know, if, if you got, like I said, if you have a stock configuration, I think that this is a pretty good uh, base to start with. Um, and then other than that, I mean, uh, this stuff should be set to off. You can change your sensor range um, if you need to, but it should be set to 650 uh, for the L28. And then other than that, we really don't need anything else in the basic settings that I'm aware of. Here's where we actually get into the actual tuning portion of everything. So we have an air to fuel ratio table. And like I said, you're gonna have a, a little target on here that's gonna move around based on your RPM and then based on the fuel load. These are numbers that I actually found online uh, that I was pretty happy with. Now, basically these are it's kind of hard to describe as far as i'm aware these are like what you're what you're wanting the air to fuel ratio to hit if that makes any sense so like let's say i change my afr table um i could be wrong but i don't think that these values really affect their performance i think when you go over to something like this it basically will match what you want your AFR to be at certain RPMs. And like I said, I'm not 100% on that, so you know, don't, don't quote me there, but this is where I've noticed one of the first steps that actually matters is the, the fuel table. So this is the one that I've actually changed and uh, been able to actually get you know performance out of by changing and be able to actually see results is what I should say. I can actually change it and instantly see a difference. And anytime you change anything, you do have to click burn and that's basically going to save it to the ECU um, and actually you know cause the ECU to, to run how you just uh, tuned it. Like I said, feel free if you wanna copy any of this, you can. This is not perfect, this is just what I've done at home so this isn't you know any anything insane but it like i said it does always stay between 10.5 and i would say 15 for the air to fuel ratio now obviously you want it a lot tighter than that i mean really I, i'm gonna try to make it to where it eventually uh stays somewhere between 12 and like 14.8 is probably what i'm gonna aim for but for now 10 and a half to like i said 15 is you know more than enough for me and it runs really well i just would like to fix the uh the spots where it runs a little rich so we're not wasting fuel but yeah, basically all you gotta do to edit these is you can just double click um, and add them like that. You can also highlight. Okay, so equals actually changes all of them to one specified value. Oh, here we go. So if you do this, you can actually scale it by a certain percentage. That's really nice too for if you're trying to, if you notice you have a straight curve and let's say you're starting to go rich, um, you'll hit the scale key and then you can raise it by, or not raise it, but you can uh, do point like nine and that'll lower it by 10% um, increments. So that's another really nice feature to have. So that's, like I said, one of the most important parts from what I've been able to tell in this. Yeah, this might be something that, that'll be useful for you guys as well. And like I said, I'm not an expert in any of this, so I'm just basically trying to kind of go through and show you what I have personally done to get the car running pretty well. So next over is ignition table. So the only thing, I'll go ahead and show you guys these. I have not touched any of them, but I'm sure that these are all important. This is basically uh, for the casts and, and when you're supposed to actually get, um, you know, your ignition coil firing to what cylinder and everything. So feel free to copy any of that. Now for the ignition table, this is yet again one that I copied offline or online. Um, I, like I said, I really have not seen any major differences since I did that. This is just what someone else suggested that was running a similar setup and they said it ran great for them. I don't have any knocking. I haven't had any crazy backfires or anything. So as far as I'm aware, the, the Spark Advanced um, is pretty decent right now. So, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm happy with this. So, you know, feel free to copy that as well. Now for everything else, you're not gonna, this is basically all the, the main tuning stuff. If you don't have anything fancy, uh, I all I have is an A to field ratio gauge. It's just the AEM, uh, I think it's the Yugo X. Um, and then I just have like a really cheap uh, boost gauge. Those are the only two gauges I really have. Other than that, I didn't opt for, um, you know, two step or anything crazy like that. It's just the $1,300 setup. So it's just the bare mega squirt uh, plug and play. And then let's see, for startup and idle, this part's a little bit cool. You can actually change the cranking RPM. Um, 
you can basically there's a couple of spots like for the Excel and Ridge um, and Startup and Auto where you can actually change um, how much fuel is is basically squirted to wet the walls of the intake um, to help it start quicker. And then there's also a so here we go. There's another spot where you can based on the temperature of the engine, um, which that is another thing that you actually add as well is it does come with an actual temp. Uh, readout that plugs into the side of the block um, aside from your standard one that sends to your temperature gauge so this one's also nice too because you can make it to where it runs a little bit richer um, you know after you start the car so that part's you know ni nice as well to have especially to just help the car in the winter and whatnot but other than that though i have not touched anything um, this is all the main settings that i've done and i've been able to like i said i mean you guys saw the video i'm able to get uh, 10 psi spooled up pretty quickly uh, it runs a little bit rich with the tune that I have now, but other than that, it runs really good, and I haven't had like plugs foul out or anything yet. So and I've been running it for a few months now and haven't really had any issues. So I'm really happy uh, with this tune. One thing I do suggest getting as well is a it's it's going to be serial, and I'll show you guys what it looks like real quick. But it's a serial, or I think it's called DB9 is the other nickname for it. But serial to. Uh, USB, you're probably going to want about a six foot cable because it is really nice having all this extra cable to actually be able to have it sit in your lap. There, Godzilla Raceworks will include one, uh, but the downside is it's very short. Like you can't even have it in your lap, and so I don't really know what they expect you to do with it besides maybe using a USB extension. Um, so I highly recommend getting one of those off Amazon for like 10 bucks. If I can remember, I'll put one in the description for you guys. I'll put this actual exact one um, so you know it works. And just to show you guys real quick uh, what it should actually look like. So you're not going to get anything until you turn your ignition on and hopefully this works right away sometimes you have to like restart the actual program for it to work so for some reason you're getting this after you've already started the car um, like where you're getting not connected and you're wondering what the heck's happening uh, i believe you go to communications settings and then you might have to basically find uh the db9 to usb serial port or sorry serial to, to usb port um, and then you should, it should pop up and you should be able to click it and then it'll, yeah, it should work. All right, so accept, accept, because I, I think it changes um, whatever port it's on sometimes. So you can see now we got it working. So uh, like I said, it should work even when you have the ignition on. I actually just went ahead and started the car because uh, I, I was thinking maybe that's why it wasn't working, but uh, that obviously wasn't it. So one thing um, I, I will say, and I don't, I don't know if this is just me, but for some reason my air to fuel ratio is like always not correct on here. I, I don't know why, that's another reason why I don't really go uh, with what this says because I trust this one a lot more because this is a great gauge and I've used it in a few cars. Um, and just based on how it runs, I know that it's not running at, at 10, you know, 10 to 1 right now. It, it would be barely running and uh, incredibly rich. But so you can see you got your RPM, ignition advance, uh, throttle position, which I'll go ahead and show you guys here. Let me get my foot over here. So as you press the throttle, that'll actually go up. And then your pulse width for the uh, injectors also go up as well. And then your fuel load should also go up. If that's not going up, like I said, you're... Uh, your gauge is basically disconnected. And when I say gauge, I meant to say your vacuum line from your ECU, your mega squared ECU is not connected if that's not working. So now I'm just gonna show you two over in fuel settings again, what that'll look like. So you remember how I said, so when you're at like an idle, you're gonna get a high load, uh, even with the low RPM, especially if you just smash down the throttle, you're gonna go straight up. And when I said AFR, I actually totally not mean to go to that. We're gonna go to fuel table. Okay, so here's where I said you can actually change some numbers too. If you're not happy with the type of uh, like throttle response you're getting, whatever, um, feel free to change these. And like I said, you know, it should move. So if we do a nice smooth, if I barely press in the gas, we're gonna get a nice smooth sweep that way, okay? Because it's just gonna rise with the RPM, but the load's not really, there's no load on it, okay? Now, let's say I'm getting into some major boost. I'm gonna be going up this way, especially if I, if I just hammer down, I'm gonna go up and then that way. That's basically how this table's gonna work. So, this is basically gonna be like your cruising range is kind of all down here, um, nice and easy. Now, to get up to cruising though, let's say you're gonna have to give it some fuel, you're gonna kinda come up and then you're gonna come back down. All these numbers that you hit are gonna be how much fuel it's adding. So you gotta make sure that, um, you know, based on if you're getting rich or lean in one spot, you gotta adjust these numbers to match that. 
I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Uh, if you have any more questions or anything, you know, feel free to leave a comment uh, in the description, or sorry, not in the description, leave a comment in the comment section down below. Um, and, you know, as long as I see them, I'll be glad to help out. Um, you know, obviously this isn't like an installation video and I, that's probably something that I won't do because I wouldn't even say that I did a great job at it. I mean, I followed the instructions to the T, but even then the instructions are, they're very difficult because it's about 40 steps if I remember right. So just take your time with it. Um, you know, I, I spanned it out over a couple or a few days even uh, and try to make sure you have everything you need before you start it so you're not pulling your hair out yeah i hope you guys enjoyed today's video don't forget to like comment and subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next one